to Wood Turner's Journal. I'm Jared Toth, and whew, in Vegas it's hot as a mug. So, with that in mind, I figured why not make a mug just like I promised last time. But this time we're going to be doing a segmented uh, mug. Last time I made it out of one piece of black walnut, and I carved the whole thing out. Um, but in this video, um, it's made out of zebra wood and black walnut trim with a black walnut handle and it's a much bigger mug than the last one I made and it's actually made out of I decided you could do it however many segments you want it uh, you want but I decided um, nine segments so I have nine strips making up the zebra uh, wood and so uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to the table saw and we're gonna be cutting the boards I'll be cutting um, this is actually three and a half inches the zebra wood and then we'll be cutting 20 degree angles on them to make it. So you figure that out by there's 360 degrees in a circle divided by nine segments, that's 40 uh, degrees. And then there's two angles on each side. So you divide it by two and that's 20. So we'll take it to the table saw and we'll get started. So here we are. I just trimmed off the edge at the 20 degree so now, so I cut it like that, and now all you're, all I'm gonna do is keep on flipping it to make sure that both angles are pointing towards each other. So I need to cut off nine strips. So for this mug, um, I just have the zebra wood attached all together with the black walnut. I think I want to do something different on this one and I'm going to, every three pieces, I'm going to put a just a strip of black walnut dividing it. So there'll be three strips of black walnut in there just, just to make it a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to rip a couple uh, black walnut. Uh, three and a half inch pieces just some strips. so I put everything here dry just to see how it lines up everything looks uh, it's not perfect but it's pretty close to perfect so and then I cut uh, the black walnut strips all I did I mean these things are probably like an eighth of an inch and they're just gonna be like I said probably every three segments I'm gonna throw them in there just to give it a little something different um, just a different effect um, so next part is to get it glued up and I have a bag of rubber bands and rubber band it together and then let it dry overnight. And there we have it. Now we just let this dry overnight. All right, we are back and it hasn't been um, 24 hours like I said it was gonna be to dry, but it's been about eight or nine. And that's good enough um, for what I'm gonna do. All I wanna do is set it up on the lathe and take my scraper and basically make this completely flat so I could um, glue this base onto it. Then, um, then tomorrow I could get a lot more done because I'll end up, uh, this will end up being the lip of it and then uh, it'll hold it to be, uh, together a lot better for me to put the actual base on and then we could go from there but I don't want to wait until tomorrow to do it and then uh, and then that's going to be a whole day letting that dry and everything else so so uh, we'll get this on the lathe and just do a really nice light scraping of it and get it glued up. So it's nice and flush, flat, still dusty. 
So get this glued up. Then tomorrow I could end up doing a lot more on it. Start shaping it a little bit. Carve out the lip. And then we'll get the other side glued on too. This will just save me a, a day getting it done today. Put my kettlebell on there. And we'll let that sit overnight. And I mean it this time, it'll actually sit overnight and uh, dry. And then uh, tomorrow, take the rubber bands off and actually uh, shape out, get all these corners out, get it all round, start rounding the rest of it. And then we'll get the other, we'll get the bottom actually mounted on. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, it's all dried up. Now I'm gonna put it on the lathe and I'm going to just round out this part and then we'll drill a hole in here and then start shaping the mouth part to it and try to hollow, um, basically edge out all the inside, make it uh, round. Okay, we have it uh, shaped. That's about the size what, of what the mug is going to be. Now I'm going to take a Forsner bit and I'm going to cut a big hole in here and then we'll start hollowing it out. This is a two inch Forsner bit I have mounted on here. I'm just going to drill until I break through. Here we are, it is perfect inside. I just gotta sand it. And now I'm going to glue on the bottom and uh, then we'll shape that round. But I wanna, the reason I didn't put the bottom on uh, first um, with, with the top is so I could easily get both sides and, and shape it. You know, I could, you saw that I was flipping it back and forth and it makes it a lot easier. But now I wanna get the bottom on there because it's getting thinner and I still have to make it a little bit thinner, the whip and everything else, and the bottom will help strengthen it. Um, so we're gonna get that glued on next before I actually start 
shaping all this and then sanding it down and everything. So that'll be the next thing that we do. Once again, uh, I'm a Momo. I, uh, I got ahead of myself and I, I forgot to show you uh, me gluing the base on, but it's, it's basically the same as I did before. You could see I have two of them going here. Um, so same thing, just I put glue around the rim, I wiped it on with my finger, make sure it was even, and now I have uh, a weight on there. And uh, we'll let that dry, you know, I'll probably uh, let it go for eight hours or so, make sure that it's thoroughly dry, and then, uh, then we're going to put it back on the wave, and I'll shape it and round it, and then we'll start our sanding and uh, finishing it. And, um, and I need to build a handle. So I'll show you again. I showed you in the last video um, how I do it, but this time I'll actually, we'll do a time lapse and I'll show you the whole process um, because it's a lot of uh, hand sanding with it. So um, when we come back, we'll be putting this back on the lathe and, uh, and shaping the bottom. Here we are, they spent most of the day drying. Um, so it's, it's on there uh, good. Um, so I'm just going to, this is the bottom, so I'm just going to smooth it out, make it flush with the rest of the mug. And this is just a little stopping block to make sure I didn't pierce or ruin it on the other side. So let's just take it down really fast. to uh, shape the lip make it a little bit more narrow and smoother so we'll do that next I'm going to wipe it down with uh, some mineral spirits just to see what it looks like, if there's any more sanding I need to do. I don't get too crazy uh, in the inside because, um, well, first you can't sand there very well, and then second of all, uh, so much epoxy ends up going in there. I don't care if it's totally smooth, um, you know, it, it all gets filled in. So let's uh, wipe it off with the uh, mineral spirits, but right now it, it looks pretty good to me. Here we are, and um, I've run into some problems because I'm actually working on several of these cups, uh, several of these mugs all at once. This is the one I did in my last video. And to put the epoxy finish on it and to get it this smooth, it actually took me like, um, I don't know, three or four coats. And it's not exactly perfect. If you look up close, there's a little bit 
of uh, blemishes and you could see like tiny little run marks. I mean, it looks like it's, you know, from afar, but when you actually hold it in your hand, you could see that it's not perfect. Um, so I'm actually working on several mugs all at once. And I got my rotating uh, drying system in. And I was hoping that would end up making it a lot smoother. So this is the one I'm working on in this video. And I haven't, uh, we haven't done the handle yet. And I haven't started. But I decided to test if this was going to work with the epoxy. Because um, to put the coating on is, uh, like I said, it doesn't want to exactly, it wants to beat up, it wants to run. So I thought by rotating it, it would come out a lot better. Um, I don't, I mean, it came out thicker, but it didn't come out better. It, um, I don't know if you could see it in the camera. There is a lot of pools basically on there. And I'm gonna have to hand sand all this down and make it and try to make it smooth again. It's gonna take a ton of time. So for this one that we're doing, I'm thinking about switching it up. Um, I think I'm gonna use the epoxy for the inside because the inside's not as important. Um, it will protect it and that way you can still put the hot liquid in there, um, you know, but it's just not as noticeable. And on the outside, I think I'm going to just go with the uh, uh, salad bowl oil finish on it to do a few coats of that to try to protect it. Um, I didn't want to go with that in the beginning because it doesn't protect against heat, but only the heat will be in the inside with the epoxy. And then after, you know, so long, you're supposed to, uh, you know, reapply it and everything else. But um, if you hand wash these, hopefully, you know, they get minimum use on the outside. So it should hold up a little bit better. It's just not the way I wanted to do it. I want it all 100% protected. Um, I looked online and there's other uh, epoxies to get and use. They are extremely expensive. This this one that I'm using here, Max Clear HP. It's a two-part epoxy. Comes out crystal clear. Um, gets hard. Seems pretty nice, but I've had nothing but problems with it getting it uh, perfectly smooth. And I've tried almost every technique. If you saw my last video, I tried you know uh, wiping it on and uh, you know and basically wiping it off the same way you would do tongue oil or anything, and it like even then it wanted to beat up and be rough so i thought this this rotating system was my last hope that it would work um i read on several forms other people trying other ones and having success but uh, i don't want to spend the money there uh, the one that the guy recommended was 60 bucks for a pint of it and that's just way too expensive i'd go through that in no time so i'm gonna go ahead and do it this way and Hopefully it comes out uh, really nice. I don't think it'll be a problem. Like I said, I just don't want to have to worry about it in a, in a few years. So another one I'm working on, what I did was, um, all I did was turn a little piece of scrap wood and I cut a hole in there and then I went and got a hot glue gun, glued it on the bottom and that way it slides right onto the system. And so now, while I work on the handles, we'll glue the inside up and get that going, and then we'll glue on the handle and then finish the outside with the with the um, salad bowl finish oil. So let's get uh, let's get the inside uh, finishing. cut out the piece for the handle that we're going to be making. I always use, uh, well currently I've been using this mug just because I like a bigger handle and I really like this mug and so all I usually do is just trace it on there and I already have, I've already made a few of these but I have bigger hands and it really fits so and I like the way the oversized handle looks on these mugs so that's all we're going to do, so I'm going to trace it and then we'll take it to the scroll saw.
Part of my cuts, uh, I am not that great at the scroll saw. Uh, it's something I don't really use that often, but it doesn't matter because now I'm gonna smooth everything out on the um, sander here. Now I kind of look like a genius on the scroll saw. So next we're gonna take it and I need to glue it back to this like that. So I could take a 3 8 round over bit with my router and round off all the edges. I'm going to saw off this part so I could get this edge a lot cleaner. And then we're going to have to go and hand sand it. So there's that. Now I need to cut this back off the handle and we'll start hand sanding. What I hand sand? I, uh, it's a kind of a timely process, so I kind of just sit here in this chair, and I like using these foam sanders. Um, you can get them at, you know, any uh, hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, and this is a 220 grit, and I like it because it's, it's kind of forms around it when you push on it, but all you want to do, I mean, it's up to you, but I just like to smooth out any kind of rough edges on it, and I also have a Dremel and that's to touch up the inside a Dremel sander and I kind of uh, will kind of smooth out like you can see there's a little maybe you can see it there's a little bump right there and a little chip right here and I'm gonna smooth all that out so it's basically how I do it I like it. I think we're good. So here we are. We got to get the handle mounted to the side of the cup. And in my last mug video, um, I was taking a, a piece of sandpaper and putting it on the mug and basically sanding it to round out the edges so it uh, sat on there really flush. You could do that if you want, but now I've already made like four or five of these and I realized um, I use Gorilla Epoxy and I used a clear one and with enough of that you put it on here um, you really don't because I mean it's almost all touching anyways the diameter on here isn't really that that sharp so um, if you really wanted to do it you could do it but I, I don't do it anymore it takes so much time to sit there and round that out so um, just gluing it and putting plenty of that Gorilla Epoxy um, is all you really need. So, without further ado, I'm going to get this mounted up. I put plenty on here.
And here's the pain in the ass part. I like to throw a rubber band. Now I take a little bit more and kind of fill in the edges. And really pack it down in the crack. Then take a towel, wipe off whatever is around it. And let that dry. It's five minute epoxy, so it doesn't take that long. But I'm gonna let it dry for probably about an hour or so. Here we are, handles glued, and I went ahead and turned another um, just a knob and I drill a seven uh, millimeter hole in there, and that's what fits perfect on your. So if you do it, and then I use my hot glue gun to glue it on, and that way when I'm done, it actually peels off really nice. But that way, you know, it stays away from it and it, it holds on when it spins. Um, I have the epoxy all mixed up. This stuff, Max Clear HP, I am not thrilled with. Just so you know, there's, you know, there's probably better products out there. Um, but it's what I'm working with. So I figured out what to do. So this is a mug I'm making for myself. And um, this is what I'm doing. I'm going really thick inside. It's doing the inside really nice as it spins. And I'm doing that thick with epoxy. I'm doing a light coating with the epoxy on the outside. And then I'm going back after a dry sanding and I'm using just clear salad bowl finish. And it's coming out. It seems to work really nice. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, like I said before, but it seems to be the route to go. So I already have this mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying this. On the inside, I want it thicker too. Make sure you get all the walls real nice and thick. Remember, that's where the hot, li hot liquid will be or any kind of liquid and you don't want it seeping through. So this thing will be spinning. I haven't had any problems on the inside. It's only the outside. The outside, it wants to form bubbles. And I've even taken um, heat to it, trying to get rid of the bubbles. And I've even kept on wiping it down. And they just want to keep forming. So I'm just going to go thin on the outside now. Like I said, let it just seep into the wood grains. We'll sand it smooth later. And then we'll start putting the salad bowl finish on the outside.
this a nice light coating, making sure you're getting everywhere. I'll slide it onto my People keep asking me how long this process is taking me. And just so you have a reference uh, of everything, this whole process, my actual time to do all this, is probably around the eight hour mark per cup is how long it takes. Getting all the material out, getting all the tools out. And then what I wanna do, I have that all on there. I just wanna hit this really fast with the hot glue gun. There's a tendency to want to fall off. All right. We have it spinning. That's gonna go. I'll probably have it spin for a few hours and then I could probably stop it, but I'll keep it up on there. And uh, when we come back, I'll uh, sand it down and start applying the salad bowl finish to it. So here it is, it's done uh, drying the first, uh, well, the coat of epoxy. And I'm not sure if you could see it on the camera, but there's tons of ripples in there. So now next, I'm not gonna show it, uh, but next what I do is I take a, a 320 grit and I kind of just, I soap it up, soapy water, and I lightly just sand it until it's all uh, really nice and smooth. And then after that, we're going to be putting the salad bowl finish oil on there. We'll put like three or four coats of that on there just to protect the outside. I don't touch the inside from this point because um, uh, it the inside seems to come out really nice. And there's uh, I don't want the salad bowl finish in there. I just want the coating of epoxy because when you put hot coffee or anything in there, the salad bowl finish will wear away. And I'm not that worried. The outside doesn't get that much use. So. Um, when we come back, I'll already have this sanded and we'll be putting the salad bowl finish on there. <clears throat> Here we are, it's sanded down. And now I'm going to start applying the salad bowl finish to it. Just doing a wipe on. And after I get done applying this about every six or seven hours or so it'll, it'll dry and then you sand down with 400 and then reapply just the same process for finishing so when we come back I'll be done with this and I'll show you the finished mug. There it is, we're complete. Um, it came out really nice. Um, I put on three coats of the salad bowl finish along with the first coat of epoxy. So it should be completely sealed and uh, waterproof and be able to hold up to heat. Um, thanks for watching, I'm Jared Toth. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you liked it. Uh, leave any comments and check out my website, woodturnersjournal.com. Thank you so much.